The topic of the month for November 2016 is Stabilized Approach and Go Around. In this presentation, we'll talk a little bit about loss of control accidents and recommendations from a work group that studies loss of control. We'll define and discuss stabilized approaches and go arounds. Finally, we'll give you some tips and tricks that will help you to avoid loss of control in any aircraft. In a recent 10-year period, there were more than 1,200 fatal loss of control accidents. Many of those accidents occurred in the approach phase of flight, think stall spin crash, and many of those accidents resulted from an unstabilized approach or a failure to go around. Here are some findings of a recent study of loss of control accidents. Most fatal GA loss of control accidents have one or more of these causal factors. We'll focus on unstabilized approaches and go-arounds, but we'll also touch on over-reliance on automation and aeronautical decision-making. Pilots often think of stabilized approaches in terms of instrument flying in large airplanes, but they're equally important to VFR pilots in smaller aircraft. Either way, what you want is a constant speed and a constant descent rate that will give you from a given point to the touchdown zone with a minimum of maneuvering. That's important because the stabilized approach will safely get you in the best position to land with the least amount of work to do when you get there. We'll begin with a discussion of instrument approach operations. VFR and pattern operations will come a little bit later. For instrument operations, we want to be stabilized no lower than 1,000 feet above the runway on the correct flight path to the touchdown zone. That means we're on a direct course from 1,000 feet to the airport. We use a power setting that will yield the recommended approach speed for our aircraft in landing configuration. In the descent department, maintain the glide slope if you're landing on a precision approach runway or not more than 500 feet per minute rate of descent unless a greater descent rate is required for approach. We're stable if we have to make only small corrections in pitch, heading, and power to maintain the path. Before you're 1,000 feet above touchdown, you also need to be configured for landing with the landing checklist complete. Many instrument pilots want to have all this done by the time they reach the final approach fix. They'll generally be a little higher than 1,000 feet at that point, but it's a good practice that will give you plenty of time to concentrate on flying to the missed approach fix. If the wind is gusting, we can add some speed to compensate, but not more than half of the gust factor. If the wind is at 12 knots and gusting to 18, we can add 3 knots to our final approach speed. So what if we're not stable by the time we descend to within 1,000 feet of the runway? Well, the answer is simple. We go around and set up a more stable approach on the next try. This can be a tough decision to make, especially if you must make another instrument approach. That's why you have to be committed to the decision before you reach the 1,000 foot point. Then it's simple. If you're stable, you continue. If not, go around and set up again. VFR parameters are essentially the same except that you can get a little closer to the ground before making the go-around decision. If you're flying a pattern, you need to be stable on final in landing configuration with the landing checklist complete. If you're not stable at 500 feet, go around. I know we cited some general performance numbers in the previous slides, but what speeds and configurations do you use for your flying machine? Obviously, the place to go is the POH. You want to study your performance charts, speeds for safe operation, systems, and emergency procedures. Have your speeds and configuration data memorized so you don't have to check the book in the middle of a high workload evolution. Excessive speed, excessive altitude, and the necessity for maneuvering can all contribute to a destabilized approach. Obviously, Entering the pattern at 150 knots or just above stall speed or 1,000 feet above the pattern altitude major heading changes make a stabilized approach unlikely if not impossible. But how often have you heard this from the tower? Cessna 43 Kilo Charlie, keep your speed up to the marker. 
faster traffic to follow. Or how about this? Piper 312 Victor Papa make an S turn on final. Traffic departing. Or how about a Bonanza following a J3 Cub on final at a non-towered airport? ATC and other traffic in the vicinity can destabilize your approach if you let them. If following traffic or complying with ATC instructions will destabilize your flight, it's time to exercise your pilot in command responsibility. Say, unable, and make another plan. Let's face it, it's hard to say unable. Pilots need to have a good self-image in order to do what we do, and we care a lot about how others see us. We take justified pride in our skills and competencies that enable us to be adaptable and accommodating to rise to the occasion if need be. We're also mission oriented and will do almost anything to get her done. That's a formula for success most of the time. But as the song says, you've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away and know when to run. It's fine to be all of those things, but when your approach is becoming unstable, it's time to get out of Dodge. There's no shame in missing an approach or going around. Great pilots anticipate the need and they do it frequently. Let's face it, instructors are very good plane handlers. They can easily salvage a student-induced destabilized approach and make a perfect landing, usually. When we take control, we salvage the situation, saving time and money. We get the airplane back on time for the next student. Our performance definitely impresses our students and, with luck, even the boss but it's sending the wrong message. Watching us fix a problem they've created, students begin to believe that with the right skills they can fix anything and they look forward to the day when they can equal their instructor's skill. Many students believe that they'll get there sometime next week. Your students will get into impossible situations and you'll want to take over, but you do them a disservice if you fix the problems. Allow them to analyze the situation, miss the approach, or go around, and when they do that, reward them for excellent aeronautical decision making. So when do I go around? If you're at or below 1000 feet IFR or 500 feet VFR and the approach isn't stable, it's time to miss the approach or go around. Likewise, if the runway you're approaching is out of service or there's traffic on it, that won't be clear when you get there it's also time to go around. Whatever the situation, the earlier you make the go around decision, the easier it will be and once you've decided to go around, stick to that decision. Changing your mind after you've started the maneuver is bound to be destabilizing and you're too close to the ground for that. When missing an approach or going around, you're usually pretty close to the ground so your first priority is to maintain aircraft control. Arrest your descent, apply power to maintain altitude or climb as appropriate, and configure the airplane for climb or level flight. With the aircraft under control and not descending, it's time to navigate. If your IFR, continue to the missed approach point and then either fly the published missed approach procedure or follow ATC instructions. VFR, continue to the runway threshold while climbing to pattern altitude then either maneuver to remain in or re-enter the pattern or following ATC instructions as appropriate. When we're satisfied we're safely aviating and navigating, it's time to let other folks in on our plans. Communicate your intentions to ATC if IFR or in a towered environment. IFR operations to non-towered airports require a call to ATC and perhaps a call on the common traffic advisory frequency. VFR will be one call only on the tower frequency or local traffic advisory frequency as appropriate. For many years we've been developing automation for general aviation pilots and we've encouraged pilots to use it. That's led to a reduced hands-on workload and increased situational awareness. Those are good things, but paradoxically, reliance on automation is beginning to erode basic pilot skills and, when the situation calls for pilots to take over, they're often not performing as well as they would have if they were hand flying all along. We recommend that pilots be familiar with and comfortable in operating all the automation in the airplanes they fly. But we also recommend that they practice hand flying regularly, so when the occasion arises, they'll be on top of their game. 
This is a good subject to explore in refresher training. Finally, here are some tips and tricks to help you avoid a loss of control accident. Plan to miss or go around. You should plan for and brief, if appropriate, the missed approach or go around for each and every approach. Know where you'll make the decision and miss or go around at that point. Don't second guess yourself. This is the time to stand by your decision. Preset the frequencies you'll need. Planning for misses or go-arounds also involves setting up your nav and comm radios in anticipation of these events. This is pretty easy with today's radios that store multiple frequencies, but even if you have one frequency to work with, you can list the frequencies in sequence on your kneeboard or scratch pad. That way, you won't have to go searching for them in a high workload phase of flight. Manage distractions. Learn to manage distractions, especially while maneuvering close to the ground. Maintaining a sterile cockpit while in the departure approach and landing flight segments and while maneuvering. Make sure your aircraft is stable before copying ATC instructions, changing charts, reviewing approach, etc. Assign the second pilot or a passenger to help you scan for traffic. You can often turn distracting passengers into assets by assigning them a job to do. Practice missed approaches and go-arounds. Don't wait until you have to do it for real to practice these maneuvers. At least once a quarter fly a missed approach. Pick one that requires pilot navigation, not just vectors for another approach. If you're usually vectored to final for most of your approaches, you should practice a complete approach procedure without vectors quarterly too. The same is true for go-arounds. It's a good idea to practice them from time to time as well. Going around, re-entering the pattern, collision avoidance, and communicating your intentions really increases pilot workload and, with practice, you'll look like a pro when you have to do it for real. Seek regular refresher training. We suggest you do annual refresher training at a minimum more frequently if you're new to flying and when returning to flying after a layoff. Ask your CFI to include full approach procedures and misses as well as a go-around or two. The Wings Pilot Proficiency Program is a good place to document your training. Now for a quick review. Stabilized approaches are essential to safe flying. A stabilized approach is essential to instrument and VFR flying. And it does not matter whether you're an airline pilot with thousands of hours or a private pilot just starting out. So this is definitely an all of the above question. After you begin a go-around, you can change your mind, but only once. This is false. Changing your mind and trying to complete a landing after you started the go-around is destabilizing. You're better off to complete the go-around and return for another landing attempt. Flight instructors should demonstrate how to salvage unstable approaches. False. This practice, though common, is usually not recommended. If CFIs always take over and stabilize the approach or complete the landing, students don't get to make the go-around decision, nor do they get practice in go-arounds. As certificated pilots, they may be less inclined to exercise the go-around option, and that has contributed to a significant number of approach and landing accidents. The order of priority in executing a missed approach or go-around is C. Aviate, Navigate, Communicate it's true that all of these things happen at nearly the same time, but your first priority is to fly the airplane, followed by navigating so as to avoid impacting terrain. Once you've got those under control, it's time to communicate your intentions. Good practices to avoid loss of control are F. All of the above. There's nothing like the feeling you get when you know you're playing your A game. And in order to do that, you need a good coach. So fly regularly with a CFI who will challenge you to review what you know, explore new horizons, and to always do your best. Of course, you'll have to dedicate time and money to your proficiency program, but it's well worth it for the peace of mind that comes with confidence. Vince Lombardi, the famous football coach, said, Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. For pilots, that means flying with precision on course, on altitude, on speed, all the time. 
and be sure to document your achievement in the Wings Proficiency Program. It's a great way to stay on top of your game and keep your flight review current. Please discuss these items with your FAST Team representative or FAST Team Program Manager. Please direct any questions about this program to your local FAST Team representative. Special thanks to the Jeremy Walters Band for backing music. Narration by Bradford Wood, FAST Team Assistant National Outreach Manager.